Today, I show you how to pass tech inspection. What is up guys and welcome back to another video. Today we go over how to pass tech inspection at your local drift event. Most tracks use the same rules, but some may vary. Before I get into this, please subscribe to my channel. Every little bit helps. There are two parts to tech inspection, driver rules and vehicle rules. Let's start with you, the driver. Clothing. This one will vary by track, but most events require closed toe shoes, long pants, t-shirt or a long sleeve shirt, and a helmet. The shoes, pants, and shirt are obvious, but when it comes to a helmet, I don't recommend anything below an SA 2015 rating. Helmets are impact rated. Most events won't let you run a DOT or an M rated helmet. When you're buying one, you will notice that SA rated helmets are more expensive than a DOT. This is something to not cheap out on. Your safety is at risk. If you are concerned about price, go get yourself a Racequip helmet. They are of good quality and priced great. This next section is about your vehicle tech inspection itself. Your car will be checked for leaking fluid, play in suspension, torn bushings, etc. Don't show up to an event with fluid leaking. You won't even be allowed on track. As far as suspension and bushings, you should be checking that stuff pretty regularly. Drifting puts a ton of stress on suspension components and they fail pretty regularly. They will check for missing lug nuts, that includes on wheel spacers as well. You must have a coolant overflow bottle. Most tracks will allow you to use a regular water bottle or something like that. When drifting or sitting in grid, your car can get pretty hot. Your coolant is going to expand because of the heat, and if it hits the pressure that your rad cap is rated at, the coolant has to go somewhere. Don't be that guy that spills coolant all over the track because you can't follow a simple rule. Your battery must be securely tied down. That means no ratchet straps and no zip ties. Use the OEM tie down. If you can't, go to an auto parts store. Universal tie downs are extremely cheap and they will hold your battery in place. While we're on the topic of batteries, you must have a cover for your positive terminal. If for some reason your battery tie down breaks or you crash, you need that cover to protect your battery from shorting out against the body of your car. The next requirement is that you can't have any loose items in your car, floor mats, tools, etc. Take them out before tech. Your seats must be mounted securely. They can't have play. I've seen seats break. It sucks for the driver. You immediately lose all control of your vehicle. Don't buy shit seats. Not all tracks require this, but most do. Make sure that your car has front and rear tow hooks. In the event of a crash or a breakdown, the crew needs to get you off track so the event can continue. If you don't have tow hooks, they're going to hook up to whatever they see first. You must have a fire extinguisher. All tracks require this. If they don't, for whatever reason, put one in your car anyway. I've seen multiple fires at the track. They must be within reach of you while strapped into your seat. Don't put them in the back seat and don't put them in the trunk. That serves zero purpose. You will be pretty sorry to see your expensive build go up in flames just because you don't have a $30 extinguisher in your car. Most extinguishers will be able to keep a fire under control until the track crew gets to your car. Don't be stupid, put an extinguisher in your car. If your exhaust manifold is on the same side as your brake master cylinder, make sure the master cylinder has some form of heat shield. Your exhaust gets very hot. It can melt your fluid reservoir and cause a fire, which is not fun. And the last and final tech requirement at most tracks is roll cages and seat belts. Cages aren't required for coupes or sedans, but if you have a vert, you need a cage. Most places only require you have a hard top, but put a cage in it. Rollovers are a real risk of drifting, and if you are like me, you don't want to die. You must have padding anywhere your head can come in contact with a bar. As far as seat belts go, if you don't have a cage, use factory belts. If you use a harness with no cage and you roll the car, you can crush yourself because your body will be held upright, not able to move out of the way. If you don't believe me, look up how seat belts work. If you have a cage, you must have proper harnesses correctly installed. They will check this. My local track has an old track that we can drift on. There was a bad crash last season and now we have to have a full cage to tandem. That includes door bars. Remember, tech inspection is for the safety of you, track personnel, and the spectators. The rules are not there to piss you off. They are there to provide safety to you and everyone around you. If your car fails, don't fight with them. Use it as a lesson and learn from it. Make your car better because it will only make you better and protect you. Hopefully I was able to help you out and give you a better understanding on the rules put in place. Like I said, these are the rules for most of the tracks in my area, but they may differ from what your local track requires. That is it for me today. Make sure to subscribe and if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.